is the Shamir. Hi, Zazri. What do you do and what's your field of work? So I run a software company. We deploy and implement artificial intelligence solutions for supply chain. Um, I actually got to try programming before in school and it wasn't easy. Mm. And you didn't study computing in school and now it's your job. How did that happen? So I actually started my company by accident. My father had a logistics planning problem that required a fair bit of coding, which I happened to know at that point. So we basically doubled down, founded a team, and you know, many years later, became a software product company, right? So the thing about programming, I actually picked up uh, from a really young age, and uh, here's the secret, I, I like to play a lot of computer games. So some of the games I, I wanted to play required me to disassemble and assemble them back in, in different ways. And that's basically how I learned how software work. You know, one of the inspirations uh, for me personally was this character, Doc Brown from Back to the Future. So he's like a mad scientist guy who's always, uh, you know, innovating, uh, getting inspiration from strange things and creating solutions. Um, and one of the opportunities I had, my secondary school biology teacher, Madam Ashkin, she really went hands-on and uh, tried her best to bring to life what we were learning from textbooks. She would go to the wet market, bring back like a cow's heart, and basically made us dissect the heart to kind of see how it works. When we dissect a problem like that, it's analogous to that. So you, you have to, you know, apply first principles thinking and um, try to translate, again, that, that spirit of adaptive thinking, uh, what we see here to the, the problem at hand. Yeah, so. Yeah, long story short, this is, this is how I got into programming. So how did you make the right choice? Yeah, so I don't think we ever really know whether we made the right choice, right? Uh, the important thing is to, to try many different things and explore. I think for me personally, I knew from a young age that science was my thing. I wanted to be a mad scientist. And I think the uh, experiences I had in school was, was really helpful. So to quote my... Um, NUS professor, in the first day, he was saying that the field of life sciences is so broad, that's within life sciences, right, that it is very important that we know what we want to learn and learn what we want to know. So I actually joined a pharmaceutical company. I was in the cardiovascular team. Then I joined a medical device company, the cardiac surgery team. Yeah, then I moved on to diagnostics as well, building medical devices. I think what appealed to me in the end was that end-to-end -end cycle, like from an innovative idea to actually doing something for humankind that contributes, right? So it's very long for pharmaceuticals, it's a bit shorter for medical devices, a bit shorter for diagnostics, but for software, it's like instant, you know? So you think of an idea, you, you build prototypes, you compile the app, boom, it works, right? Someone can, can click on it and improve their lives. So that was like my, my boost of dopamine, right? So um, I guess that's how I found my, my calling. So software now. Don't worry too much about making the right choice. Think about making the choice right. In this day and age, everything is changing so fast. What if what we learn in school is outdated? So firstly, we need to be open. The, the world is changing really fast. For me personally, I see that the role of our any educational system is to really teach the A, B, C to Z of what we think the industry or the economy needs, right? And of course, that A to Z will keep changing as the world changes, right? And we basically need to, to keep up and adapt. Uh, it's most important to learn how to learn. As a tech startup founder, the, the main statistic is that 90% of tech startups fail, right? And it's not always because we, we didn't work hard enough and all that or bad luck. It could be, you know, we're trying to go to market too soon or it's too late, right? And because the technology changes so quickly. So we, we need to keep up, but also make that critical assessment. So how do you think me and my friends could keep up? So the thing is, we seldom have all the information we need to make certain decisions whether it's a management decision or a product decision. And we have to be comfortable with working in a volatile, highly ambiguous world, right? It is very rare that, you know, a tech startup founder has complete information and we know exactly this is the right decision. Ultimately, we are working on educated guesses. 
we have to have like a confidence interval. What is the probability of success? And of course, we have to have pattern recognition. Like, okay, I made that mistake before, right? So there's a bit of experience you have to apply, but you also need to deal with the facts of the day as they are, right? We can't argue with the facts. And we have to accept that we will not have all the facts. So because of that, the, again, the, the risk of failure is, is high and it's constant. And we have to be okay with that. So we have to be mentally resilient that we will make wrong decisions. Uh, but in aggregate, if we, we get through and things are okay, we should be okay with that. <laughs> with technology advancing so quickly, do you have any concerns? And do you think that we should be concerned about AI taking over our jobs? <laughs> uh, the short answer is yes. <laughs> okay, I would qualify it as... So, artificial intelligence is simply the, the current wave of disruptive technology that we happen to be experiencing. Right? So, in a certain century and decade, it was a steam engine. Right? replacing horses. So all the jobs related to horses were obviously you know, made redundant. And there were new jobs that came with the steam engine and cars, automobiles. It's no different with artificial intelligence. I say as a knowledge worker, we should keep an eye out. If our role seems to be pretty rep repetitive, we're just processing information here to there, we could be taken over by a bot, we should expect it to be taken over by a bot. Right, so we should do the, the more value-added work, maybe the creative thinking around it. Yeah. I am actually interested in the arts. Do you think I'll be replaced by AI in the future? So I think yes and no. Okay, so again, the arts is a very broad field, right? It's there is a work stream and process that has some parts that can be automated and some parts that cannot. So for example, um, you know, you could use uh, generative AI models like Stable Diffusion and Mid Journey to render uh, drafts, right, that you can then tweak. I think what will likely happen and really is happening is the so-called junior roles or repetitive or mundane tasks that are involved in the artistic development process, they might be, they will be at least augmented by AI tools. Uh, in some cases, they may be replaced. So. Again, we, we have to keep elevating ourselves and learn what these tools can do and master these tools so that you can do it better, right? And maybe be the orchestrator, deciding which tools make sense to be used together. Uh, what I would encourage is to experiment with AI models, like get hands-on. What we should really do is to understand the limits and capabilities of AI, like even play chess with ChatGPT is really bad at it, by the way. Um, it makes a lot of illegal moves, you know, uh, beginner mistakes. And understand that this is not something we should be frightened of. This is how we shouldn't be frightened by a calculator. Then, um, what is one skill or quality that you think our students need to have? As a parent of young children, I, I have to remind myself about this as well. I think being comfortable with learning from playing is important, right? We need to really embrace this spirit of just tinkering around with tools. It might break, uh, we might not understand it, we might not know how to put it back together again, uh, but it's important that we, we try, right? Uh, to quote Eric Hoffer, in times of change, the learners will inherit the earth, whereas the learned will find themselves beautifully equipped to deal with a world that no longer exists. We are always in times of change, be a learner for life.